talking about using social media in a God honoring way. This is actually another question that one of you directly asked us and said, hey, can you make a video about social media? Oh, 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 yo, no, what are you? Yo, bro, what are you? No knock? No knock. We just barging in now. All right, guys, what's up? How's everyone doing today? Okay, so it's been a slow week of news now, but uh, looks like uh, the Sonic Rangers news is starting to come up. We're starting to get some other news around Sonic, so things are picking up again. Anyway, be sure to smash the like button, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. We got some interesting Sonic Rangers leaks. Now, apparently, it looks like that title was just a placeholder, kind of like Sonic Wars was for Sonic Forces. So it looks like the title for this game will be Sonic Frontiers. Nothing is confirmed though, but that's what I'm getting from 4chan. You know 4chan is a hit or miss, especially when it's shared on Reddit. Now it says here, this person says, I played a demo of the new Sonic Rangers game. Here's what I experienced. Uh, the game is open world, but contains cyberspace levels scattered throughout that play like Sonic Colors, but with less 2D and no wisp from what I can tell. Okay, this is the first time someone's comparing cyberspace levels to Sonic Colors and not Unleashed their Generations. Beating these levels rewards you with XP, EXP points, and in Sonic, some cases, a Chaos Emerald. The open world plays more like Sonic Adventure, but the physics are definitely more refined and there are various unlockable moves via skill tree. In the open world, you have a health bar instead of a ring count. Rings are still present, but they just refill your health and act as currency. Basically talking about the open world has puzzles and there's like small rock creatures in the game and all that. It says this game looks beautiful visually. The open world areas definitely have a more realistic style than the recent Sonic games. That's good. But surreal environments are still present. And Cyberspace Levels has a very futuristic virtual look to it. It was nice. Kind of reminds me of uh, the whole Null Space thing with Infinite and Sonic Forces. Now, this one looks interesting. This person, I don't know. Take this with a huge grain of salt. Take everything with a grain of salt. This person says, Recently, I was able to work with some of the storyboard artists involved with Sega and Majura or Mazra in the cutscene work for the Project Sonic Rangers. Some of the scenes include Sonic on a plane, had sunglasses. What? I'm going to hold him to that. If Sonic does not have sunglasses in this game, I'm calling Cap. The plane getting attacked by ghosts, Sonic falling and landing on a beach next to a crab that pinches Sonic's nose, ghost bird flying through a dead forest, female lizard girl reminds me a lot of Rouge the Bat, sitting on stone throne, bird whispers in her ear and they both laugh. Hey, the spelling though. Dragon Lady then throws the bird against a tree and it gets struck in a hole in the tree. What? Sonic and a ghost are running, flying towards some enemies. Enemies are some Sonic-style terracotta-like stone warriors with dead expressions. Sonic jumps and does a pose in the sun or moon. Kind of like Sonic Adventure 2 with Shadow. There was more art, but I don't want to spoil too much, lol. But it certainly is interesting. I fear that Lizard Girl might attract the porn artist if what I saw was final. Bruh, bruh. Do you know anything about Sonic fans? They will turn anything to porn. After the Sonic movie, what they did to Long Claw, people were sexualizing Long Claw, making Rule 34 art on a fucking owl. After that, anything is possible. And the next one here says, It's open world with Ubisoft Tower. Sonic doesn't run fast in the open world. Side quest missions and boring puzzles in the open world. Complete missions, then you get orbs. Orbs unlock levels, which is boost gameplay with more generations than colors. Level design, best part of the game. People are either saying this is like Generations Unleashed or Colors. I mean, pick one. Complete boost levels, you get a Chaos Emerald. Complete all seven, you can fight the final boss. You play a Super Sonic. Boss fight was actually fun. Better than Jen's final boss, that's for sure. No VO, but has music. Music in the open world is boring and forgettable. Damn. Boost levels, music kicked ass. No other Sonic characters appear, not even Eggman, but this is a demo, so they probably will add other characters. You can fight enemies in the open world, button mashing. You have a bar which you can fill, and when you fill up, you can do the move in the teaser called the spin cycle. Graphics are still worse than Unleashed. No excuse at this point. That sucks. I play tested on a PS5. Overall, the game is fine, but don't expect Breath of the Wild, GTA, Mario, or hell, even uh, Assassin's Creed quality. I don't think I was expecting any of those. Maybe Mario Odyssey, but we'll see. <laughs> but anyway, as I'm sure you guys have heard, Ian Flynn is going to be involved in Sonic Prime in the writing. Now, as some news sites have uh, clarified, he's not going to be the director of Sonic Prime or the lead writer. He's just consulting with the show. Kind of like how Takashi Zuka consulted with the production of Sonic Movie, just to make sure they were doing things right and they were staying true to Sonic's design. 
which you know Tyson has helped them with. But yeah, Azuka wasn't involved in the making of Sonic uh, movie, which is I'm sure that's the same case with Ian Flynn. He's not going to be involved directly in the making of Sonic Prime. He's just a consultant. However, that's not what I wanted to talk about in this video. I have heard from a reliable source that Ian Flynn was actually involved deeply in the writing of Sonic Forces, but went uncredited. Sort of like how Michael Jackson went uncredited for Sonic 3. He says, by the way, Flynn wrote for Forces, but went uncredited. He denied it on Twitter for some reason, but it's actually true. He contributed. Very reliable source is all I can really say without giving names. It's borderline officially confirmed. So no wonder Sonic Forces had a very kind of um, Archie Comics inspired uh, tone because you know Sonic Forces came out before Sonic IDW Comics. IDW Comics first debuted April of 2018. 2017 Archie Comics were still going on. They just got canceled in the fall of 2017. So Sonic Forces had a very Archie feeling. I talked about it in previous discussion videos and old Sonic theories. So it's no surprise that Ian Flynn has something to do with the writing. That's why the story was so jarring to me and bad because the setting was very like serious and Archie based. But the writing, the dialogue was so cringy. It was, it was Pontac and Graf. Their influence was still in the game. They still wrote the dialogue. They translated much of the Japanese dialogue and changed it to be slapstick and stupid. So it didn't mesh well at all. You know, like the whole, none of this is good, Victor. That's why it's called war or shit like that. It would just be jarring. There'll either be some like really edgy, like edgelord, try hard type of line. And then there'll be a silly line like, oh, he's got... 10 terabytes of selfies or something like that so it makes complete sense now i think what sega did is they had ian flynn write the story then they brought pontac and graph over to you know not recalibrate it but kind of to rework it in their own writing and dialogue to kind of make it lighthearted or make it like sonic lost world and it completely just fell flat on his face so now that Pontaf are gone, they're not going to be involved in Sonic Rangers. One has to assume that Ian Flynn is going to be involved in Rangers, right? Also, do you think he's writing for Rangers? This person says probably since now he's advising on Prime. And I was like, wow, that's great. And since Pontac and Graf are out, that means Rangers story can be better, right? And he's like, maybe the mandates are weird. I don't trust them at all. Me neither. I don't trust Sega because of their weird mandates. There's mandates on the Sonic IDW comics too. And that's why some characters will never reach their full potential like Shadow. But the fact that Ian Flynn might be writing for Sonic Rangers and there won't be any interference with anyone. You know, there'll probably bring some other people like the Japanese guy who worked on Sonic Unleashed and the Dark Age stories. You know, to translate it into Japanese and stuff. But no Pontac and Graphic Rangers is good news. At least the story most likely will be taken more seriously. What do you guys think about it? I think that's good news because they got Ian Flynn doing a lot of stuff. You know, he's multi, he's booked now. Like he's writing the Sonic Encyclopedia. He comes back every now and then to do some spinoff stories in um, Sonic IDW, some side stories. And he's going to also be involved in Rangers. That's interesting. So uh, the meta era could be ending, guys. It could be ending. We'll see. But what do you guys think about all this? Let me know down in the comments below. All right, now onto some very intriguing news. So I was just browsing the interwebs and then I got an email from a certain viewer of mine who said, hey, hope you've been doing well and staying safe from this ongoing pandemic. Now, just to cut story short, uh, she said, I'm not sure if you've seen this short Sonic essay floating around already, but I found it to be pretty informative and felt the need to send it your way. Please read it when you have a moment and have a great day. So, I, so after reading it, I was like, yo, thank you. I will be making a video about this later in the week. Now, <laughs> this article right here, I read it and I was like, yo, I have to read this because this reminds me of those articles that I would get from uh, Christians, hardcore Christians. Now, let me tell you guys, uh, I come from a very devout Christian family. So these type of articles are not new to me at all. Let's get straight to it and read about the truth about Sonic the Hedgehog. Now it says, for this essay, the main focus will be on a popular character from an ongoing game series that came out in the early 90s. The reason why I posted this online is because I wanted to warn others out there about this media, since most people consider it to be harmless or child-friendly at first glance. I used to be really big into this fandom since I played the games growing up and would watch some of the episodes I could catch on TV as a child. 
Those who knew me coming up could tell you this truth about myself since like many others out there who enjoyed video games in their youth, Sonic the Hedgehog was pretty addicting and fun to play, much like Super Mario Bros. Since I have been born again in the spirit and made the decision to pick up my cross as Jesus told us to do in Matthew 10, 37-38 in the Bible, the Father in Heaven has been revealing a lot of information to me. Okay, So even though some readers may not believe in the Son of God, this message is still for you since it's not the Father's will for any of us to perish. I hear you, I hear you a lot Sheila. My hope is that someone who reads my essay will realize the truth in my words, heed the warning, repent of their sins, and turn their lives over to Christ before it is too late for them. As Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27 tells us in the word of God, and as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. We do not know what will happen tomorrow, so it's best to seek the Father in heaven while he may be found. I will only be exposing five key factors from this game series so that this paper does not turn into a novel. <laughs> yeah, because I ain't trying to read the Bible to everyone here. Now, most of us who are familiar with the character Sonic knows that he is considered an anthropomorphic hedgehog because of how he walks, talks, and acts like a human being. Two examples of this terminology is Anubis, one of the oldest gods of Egypt, and Felix the Cat who came out around 1919. If you were to go on Google and look at images of an actual hedgehog, you will quickly notice how the animal looks nowhere close to the blue blur most gamers have come to know and love. Wow, I never knew that. Thanks for the insight. Although Sonic may come off cool to most age groups from all around, he would actually be considered an abomination in the eyes of the Lord and I will explain why. For starters, his design and everything about him resembles the warped and crooked generation we all live in today. Oh, you talking about furries, right? While the concept of an animal with a human anatomy is nothing new in cartoons or video games, since animators have been doing this for many years now, this pattern of perversion has normalized the distortion of God's creation. Yo, I'm starting to think that uh, that Rouge spotlight for Sonic Rebound that I posted uh, uh, like a week ago is what triggered all of this because right after I posted that, Sheila sent me this uh, email, so she probably thought I was a furry or something. <laughs> But anyway, this is a long article. I just want to talk about the key points here. The inspiration behind this character links back to pop and Western culture. Simple research on Sonic will show you how the buckles on his shoes was based on Michael Jackson. True, true. For those who know about the Illuminati, oh, here we go, which is a real organization and has heard testimonies about heaven and hell from different people around the world, the connection to this celebrity should be a major red flag. Red and white are the main colors of his sneakers, and once again, easy research will reveal to you on how it was based on Santa Claus, a popular figure. Those who know the truth about him as well as the Christmas holiday understand that it all ties back to pagan worship. If you were to rearrange the words of Santa, <laughs> you would actually encounter the name Satan, which is real and the enemy of mankind. Like, the mental gymnastics this person goes through. Also, I thought Michael Jackson was against the Illuminati. Like, what? I mean, whatever. Says the third factor I'm going to cover actually expands on how humanizing an animal can open the door to wicked imaginations. I didn't know this myself until later on in life, but original concepts of Sonic actually had him with a human girlfriend by the name of Donna. Yeah, yeah, you know, saying that how it's... Uh, bestiality and all that and the person even connects us with Princess Elise in Sonic 06 we all know that so I mean I don't need to read through the whole thing but you get the gist basically Sonic is satanic Sonic is evil represents bestiality furries I mean I won't defend furries but you know it's just it's funny your regular hardcore Christian uh, hit piece on a franchise this got nothing on the Christian articles on Harry Potter though but <laughs> She even talks about how Shadow the Hedgehog is evil because the whole Black Doom, Black Army and all that. And it's like, yeah, we, we get it. And then she says that they try to uh, lighten him up in Sonic colors by glamorizing them. And you know what they think. Aliens are evil because they're not real. You know, anything, basically anything that's fantasy and, uh, you know, mythical folklore is evil. So you get the point. But that's all I have for now. So, uh, yeah. Stay tuned for my next Sonic Rebound Spotlight. That'll be on Whisper the Wolf. I know a lot of you people are excited for that. But alright, that's all I got for now. So until next time, I'm out. Mm -hmm.